I'll stress it again, people. A major reason I won't take rugby league seriously is because I've already played for Malta. I scored a try, I set up a try, and we went all the way to the final. This was a very proud moment in Malta's rugby league history, as well as my career. And there's no higher uh, level I can play rugby league, Malta always being the highest. So you've got to understand that aspect and that I know that I'm a good football player and that I can rip people apart. I've been doing it my entire career. So being in my somewhat still early 30s, but I would say early mid-30s, uh, I'm, I'm content with that. I'm more than content with that. I'd never played rugby league for money. I played it since a little kid because I loved it and still do. So for me, not taking rugby league seriously for a bunch of white dogs is the ultimate spit in their face and a way of undermining what they think is their mandate to influence in this country. It's a complete reduction of who they think they are. It's a complete humiliation and embarrassment, and it therefore says to all other persons of a non-white background that you don't have to take these sons of dogs and prostitutes seriously. That's my message. That's why I always opt for that option over the money. I rather... I can take the money. I can do the easy, whatever, million, two million, three million in the long run and do things more so before, not so much now, but I could do all that. But to what, to what avail? And then I'd have what to look forward to, that I'd just copied every other Muppet, have money coming out of my ass, and that's it. Life's boring. There's no challenge. Fucking whoop de doo What I've done is a thousand times more spectacular than that. Fuck. With the help of some good people, and also Ralph, we ended extremism in this country. And now you've got cunts from Asia, white clowns, who sort of want to bring it back out so they can take some credit for something they never did. That's how they are. They love credit, these white clowns. Uh, they used to award themselves falsely in World War II for things they didn't do. We saw the British do it. Fuck, it was hilarious. Nothing's changed with this mu bunch of Muppets. So that's my key takeaway, that the idea is to undermine their authority, because they have none as white persons. They have no right to ask of any other person from any other community to say, this is what we want you to do as Australians. In other words, they're not who they claim they are, Australians. They're sons of white, wretched fucking dogs and whores. And they do not get what they want. And with me, they never did. That's why you've got to understand. They kept on persisting. That's why they're invested in it. Because I, I've made this known to them since a fucking 15-year-old. They didn't want me to go to a Catholic church. They wanted me to... Uh, this is about 20 years old, mind you. Years ago. They wanted me to go to that fucking thing, dance party slash church that you jump up and down. What's the, I always forget the name. Ah, uh, fuck. Um... Uh, where Jared Hayne went. But Hillsong. Hillsong. <laughs> it takes me a while. They wanted me to go to Hillsong. They gave me a number. They gave me fucking details. Yeah, they, they, they're they expecting you. And I'm like, yeah, no, I'm, I'm a Roman Catholic. And they were devastated. Always getting backhanded. And they were trying. They would, they would try day after day, week after week, to apply social pressure, to apply relationship pressure, to apply occupational pressure. Weird shit was happening from left, right, and center. It culminated in 2012 with them setting up a siege, which never actually happened, a hostage crisis, which never actually happened. And interestingly, when you go back to the uh, what the news said the other week about me apparently having a mental illness, that's simply not true. The only thing they base that off, I'm telling you now, the only thing they base that off that supposed mental illness is that one incident in 2012. Nothing else. There is no history of mental illness. Not from the day I was born to 2012 and not from 2012 since. Not a tad bit of history of mental illness. Yet, this is what happened that day. I was being called on my mobile phone. I was being threatened. Somebody was threatening to kill me. Me being me, I laughed. So I took the uh, bow and arrow, uh, the, the silly cunts said they'd be there like in five or six minutes, which was fucking hilarious. This is when they threatened to kill me in 2012 because of everything I was doing with rugby league and the cops were going fucking crazy. You don't, you know very little people. So I got a call on my mobile phone. Oh, we're going to fucking kill you. We're going to do this. We're going to do that. And we're going to be there in five or six minutes. And who gets there in five or six minutes? My mother and my sister. 
So, and the the funny thing is, at that point, I heard car slams, car door slams, yelling, and a loud muffler. So I went. That's when I went upstairs, grabbed my fucking bow and arrow, and I was on my knee. I was just waiting for them to come through the door, like shoot it open, kick it open, because that's how that's how much shit I was giving these cunts. And then it was my mother and sister. And I fucking didn't know what to do because I was like, oh, fuck, I have this bow and arrow pointed at them. And I'm like, get down. I was yelling at the top of my lungs or something like that. And then I'm like, oh, my God. And then I told them to stay inside for about an hour or two before I decided what was going on. They were flipping out. But unbeknown to them, this was occurring. They They had no idea. So from that, they must have call, uh, they must have called the cops because they were scared, but they had left the house, and the cops said that I had hostages, but they had left the house. They were gone. I never uh, would I hold my own family members hostage. Like, you fucking oh my god, the shit the New South Wales police come up with. They had left the house. I was the only one there for the whole night, so the house was under siege for six hours because I wouldn't take any calls. I wouldn't. I didn't trust the police, and. I was just sitting on the computer laughing. They didn't even want to open the door. I was just waiting for them to come through the door. And if they did that, I would just be like, hey, man. All they had to do was open the door with my mum's keys and come in there and say, hey, what's going on? So they made a siege out of it because they know how I am when I don't talk to people. Like if I'm the worst when it comes to a cold shoulder. And I would do that every time. That won't change a thing. Uh, so I didn't answer calls. I didn't do nothing. I could hear them outside on some fucking speaker thing. I was fucking laughing, just typing away at my computer, thinking to myself, I'll just wait for them to arrest me. Fuck the cunts. And that's what they did after six hours. Uh, and then we went off to the to get a mental health assessment at the hospital. And I went to get another six mental health assessments. Every single doctor after that occasion was sure that there was nothing wrong. So they kept on persisting the cops. This was a first. It took the seventh doctor to see me because the, it, I would keep saying the exact same thing every time a new doctor came. And every doctor had to keep saying, uh, deducting the same thing. There's nothing wrong with him. Until they got this seventh one. I think it was some fucking uh, senile bitch. I don't know. What do you call her? That menopausal bitch. She started fucking writing away. Yeah, there's something wrong with him. Fuck me, dude. Get the fuck out of my face. And then they kept me there, uh, according to the legislation, because I was a potential danger. Oh, my God. After getting those phone calls from the cops, arranged by cops, threatening to kill me. They are fucking sad cunts. And then the event, the the uh, results of all that was them writing that letter, writing those letters and putting, making it out that I had suffered particular symptoms and a part of those symptoms was me not making i quote them professional decisions as i should have in relation to rugby league now when i was held there against my will they the doctors were cheeky they did not stop talking about rugby league i didn't bring it up and i'm not fucking with you the next day because they let you go for a walk where they kept us the next day there was jared hayne on his little fucking small bike. And he'll tell you this. Oh, fortunately, he's in jail now. He was fucking driving past me in that little bike, looking at it and smiling and nodding. And I'm laughing at him thinking, what the fuck is going on? And he probably knew what was going on. Because all the para players were sure that one day I was going to be a part of them. I was going to turn up and I was going to start taking shit seriously. They all loved me because I played footy against them all and belted the shit out of them as a kid. Uh, this is the older Paramount Eels generation, the people who played with Haynes and all that sort of stuff. Although I always stayed loyal to a lower grade team because I didn't give a fuck about reps and everything like that. Uh, but they still knew me nonetheless because I was a, <laughs> I was one heck of a fucking forward. <laughs> oh my God, I look back at it and I was. I was one heck of a fucking forward. You, you needed three or four men to tackle me at the very least. You could not do it with one person. Impossible. Too impossible. You needed three or four men. Uh, and that was minimum. I was a fucking cunt. Uh, and look, I'm 130 kilos now, and that's that just says it all. That's I'm, and I'm not I'm rather slim, 
So I was a big motherfucker, just under six foot, not that tall, I'm not tall at all, not even close to it, not exactly short, but I was one motherfucker, and uh, that's how I ran. I ran to obliterate everything, and I, that's my rugby league style. So they all knew me, they all knew who I was, Hay knew me, that's, I stuck up for him at the club two years later, or no, a year later, when I pushed that big six foot four bloke fucking ten metres across the room, because he was in fucking Hayne's face. Uh, so they all knew me, and that's the one incident they base this supposed mental illness off. And lo and behold, they try to do this typical uh, corporate technique of sandwiching, selling you the burger, so to speak, of trying to validate their supposed, uh, validate them saying I've got a mental illness with scratching cars. I mean... I acknowledge I do get angry, but I've been like that since the day I was born. That's not mental illness. That's just character. I fucking get angry. We all get angry. Although I do get very, very intensely angry. And it's just got to do with your general character, your passion, what makes you tick. And it's, it's, fortunately, it's never been violent. It's never been out of hand. It just sometimes it manifests with me scratching things, yelling and things like that. Nothing more. Never has and never will. Uh, I've never been on medication my entire life. And that one time they did give me medication by force in 2012, it did the opposite effect. Highly uh, indicative of you not having what they say. It did the complete opposite effect. So, and then not just then, but after that, several years in a row, the psychologists pretty much spilt it out. The New South Wales police and what they were doing was co contributing to this false uh, diagnosis. It's all garbage. There's no way in the world this person has a mental illness. And we're not even sure his mother has a mental illness. His mother, although they say she has a mental illness, she probably went through the same uh, difficulties because my mother did used to have dealings with police. Uh, a lot of them when she was young. Uh, as did my Uncle Tina. <laughs> oh, they were fucking cunts. My mother was a bad bitch. Oh, don't, don't mess with my mother. So, But yeah, my mother does not have a mental illness. None of us do. Uh, ha how mental health and white clowns construe things for their benefit is a deserves an entire book. Political games. None. There is no mental illness. Ill, history of mental illness in our family. If there was, would be seeing it in everyone else, not just myself and my mother. Uh, fuck it. Get the fuck out of my face. They pick because my mother was a single mother. They like to pick on that because uh, cops being crooked can uh, get their way with people. Mind you. When I was a kid, cops used to pick us up, take us places, drop us off in their wagon when I was a child. Okay, that's that's the type of uh, friendliness my mother had with the cops. And this went on for years. This was when I was a young kid around the Marylands area. And so cops have a very cheeky way of illegitimately using their powers. Um, I need to remind people of that. Now, then you'd ask, why then have you always used the mental health card at court? I have. I, I, I don't, I do not, um, I do not, um, how do I put it? Pretend that I haven't. I absolutely have. And I absolutely, I absolutely have used it in my favor. Because you can't, the state cannot use its powers to coerce in that way. And then turn around and say, oh, you can also be charged for a crime. That's why I did that. And that's why I would again and again and again until they fess up and admit they're full of shit and dogs. Until then, they can go and finger their assholes as good white dogs can. So that's where this all culminates. That I will undermine their authority. That no ethnic group in Sydney will take white clowns seriously. And that's what you get for being pieces of fucking dog shit. That's my ultimate revenge. And talking about the Kalki family... On our Kauki coat of arms, because I am a Kauki, the god Neptune is on there. And I think his wife is the goddess Nemesis. The god Neptune is the Kauki coat of arms. And he is the god of the sea. And his wife is the god of revenge. If you know my grandmother, if you know Kaukis, oh my god, the most revengeful people on the planet. Can you blame my nunu? <laughs> oh my god, no one does revenge like them. Does that mean I believe this Kauki bloke that did what he did did what he did because of that? No, absolutely not. He was drugged. I'm just saying, 
Oh, we are fucking motherfuckers. Just have a look at our coat of arms. The god Neptune. Pretty much the king of revenge. The king of all revenge. That's the god of revenge. Nemesis, Neptune. Together, the kings of revenge. So when the New South Wales police wanted to be cheeky white cunts and think that they're full of vengeance, they're full of justice. No, you silly cunts. All that's going to be taken away from you. That's the whole idea. That's why this is more important than making money. Fuck money. What's money going to get me? This is a hunt. This is a infinitely times better. So no, I, I don't have a mental illness and I never have. Not even close. Um, I can give you a million and one reasons why that's true. If I did have a mental illness, considering how much shit the police and ASIO have tried against me, I should have manifested the smallest symptom consistent with mental illness. But the opposite's happened. And that is consistent with all those tests from psychologists who have said, there is no way in the world this bloke has a mental illness. This is probably the best example of what the complete opposite of a mental illness looks like. That's what the doctors have said to me. And they actually say that to my grandfather as well. Because he's, he's a very level-headed man, my grandfather. He has a special character. He's very He can be aggro, but he's a very, very level-headed man, my grandfather. And... I'm, all my, I'm like him in many ways too. So that's what the testing has said. So when, you've got to really question what the media tell you and what the police arrange in the background as if they're ag agents of good peace. Okay, they didn't cop a brick and a paling to the head for nothing because they're agents of peace. They did it because they're racist redneck dogs calling Assyrians wog boys, telling them to get inside and acting like tough cunts. If you ask me, he deserves his broken jaw and he should remember it because it won't be the last time if they carry on like that. They've got much more to worry about if they want to be fucking cheeky white clowns. Fucking dickheads. So that's my message to the New South Wales Police in their attempt to make me play rugby league in a serious way. You didn't get your way. You'll never get your way. And I'm going to be in Malta. And as a matter of fact, I think when I'm in Malta, I'm going to send many videos to the New South Wales Police email, the commissioner too, because I have it, of me having a bat. Oh, oh, in Malta, I'll fucking send you heaps of pictures and photos and videos of me having a fucking bat. Oh, I'm going to be a cunt in Malta.